Almost a million Rohingya people are now living in the largest refugee camps in the world. August 2018 marked the first anniversary of the mass flight of Rohingya refugees into Bangladesh, following attacks carried out by the Myanmar military in which thousands were killed. I'm Kasim, this is KJ Vids, and in this video we will look at why the Rohingya crisis has escalated in recent years and why the crimes of the Myanmar government have largely been ignored. The Rohingya have faced systematic discrimination and exclusion for decades, being denied the recognition of their ethnicity. The 2017 attacks by the Myanmar military were described by the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights as textbook ethnic cleansing. He also said of the military campaign, you cannot rule out the possibility that acts of genocide have been committed. Whilst these attacks were the most systematic and the largest in scale, they were not the first. Attacks in 2012 and 2016 led to the internal displacement of more than 100,000 Rohingya people who continue to live in what are effectively prison camps with extremely limited access to food, healthcare and shelter. The Rohingya crisis needs to be seen in the context of a rapidly evolving geopolitical environment in which Myanmar has become ever so important to China's string of pearls strategy. This Chinese strategy seeks to strengthen the network of Chinese military and commercial facilities in countries falling on the Indian Ocean between the Chinese mainland and Port Sudan. The coastline of Myanmar provides naval access in the proximity of one of the world's most strategic water passages, the Strait of Malacca, the narrow ship passage between Malaysia and Indonesia. It is the shortest sea route between the Persian Gulf and China and the key choke point in Asia. More than 80% of all China's oil imports are shipped by tankers passing the Malacca Strait. If the strait were closed, nearly half of the world's tanker fleet would be required to sail further. Closure would immediately raise freight rates worldwide and affect more than 50,000 vessels per year that transit through the Strait of Malacca. The United States has been trying to militarize the region since September the 11th, 2001 on the argument of defending against possible terrorist attacks. The US managed to gain an airbase on the northernmost tip of Indonesia, but the governments of the region, including Myanmar, adamantly refused US efforts to militarize the region. Since it became clear to China that the US was hell-bent on a unilateral militarization of the Middle East oil fields in 2003, Beijing stepped up its engagement in Myanmar. Chinese energy and military security, not human rights concerns, drives this policy. In recent years, Beijing has poured millions of dollars in military assistance into Myanmar, including fighter, ground attack and transport aircraft, tanks and armoured personnel carriers, naval vessels and surface-to-air missiles. China has built up Myanmar railroads and roads and won permission to station its troops in Myanmar. China also built a large electronic surveillance facility on Myanmar's Koko Islands and is building naval bases for access to the Indian Ocean. Myanmar is an integral part of what China terms its string of pearls, its strategic design of establishing military bases in Myanmar, Thailand and Cambodia in order to counter US control over the Strait of Malacca choke point. There is also energy and other important minerals on and offshore of Myanmar and lots of it. The emboldened Myanmar military is able to oppress the Rohingya minority as they know they have unequivocal support from China, Russia and India who will shelter Myanmar's international position. Even though Chinese and Indian troops may be involved in periodic standoffs on the disputed Himalayan border and are competing for influence in Myanmar, they are on the same page regarding the Rohingya crisis. Both India and China have huge infrastructure projects in Rakhine and are giving strong backing to the Myanmar leadership. Benoda Mishra, who heads the Center for Studies in International Relations and Development in India, said that China supports Myanmar to retain its influence built over three decades of massive development aid and supply of military hardware. India supports Myanmar to play catch up and build influence partly by development financing and partly by playing on civilizational linkages based on the shared Buddhist heritage. And both India and China engage the Burmese military as much as the civilian government because the country is key to India's Act East policy and China's Belt and Road Initiative. The US, while expressing concern about the violence, has mostly stopped short of criticizing Myanmar's government or its de facto leader Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi. They hope that she could provide to be a useful ally in countering China's influence, but as it becomes more apparent that China has a much stronger relationship and advantages with Myanmar, the US could use the Rohingya card in order to undermine their government. Only recently, the US placed sanctions on several commanders and units of Myanmar security forces for their roles in the ethnic cleansing of Rohingya Muslims and other minority groups in the country. 
But Aung San Suu Kyi was not amongst those sanctioned, nor are Myanmar's top military commanders according to Reuters. Regional and global powers will not want to distance themselves from Myanmar, however distasteful its treatment of the Rohingya. Unfortunately, the Rohingya will remain as a pawn in a wider geopolitical context.